Hey, welcome to the Vortex Garage. And well, what we have here is a transmission jack. Well, why did I use the air quotes? It's because, well, quite frankly, I think that this thing is a little loose in its naming, but I suppose it has earned the name transmission jack because it has successfully raised and lowered at least two or three transmissions and even a few gas tanks. But as much as it's earned its name by doing those things, it didn't do them particularly well. In fact, using this thing is kind of harrowing sometimes, especially when you have a very expensive rebuilt transmission on the end of it that you're trying to line up in a vehicle. Now, I can't fault it that much. This is the cheapest transmission jack you can buy. Now, when I purchased this one many years ago, it was $170. Today, they're about $250. That still makes them pretty much the cheapest you know, full height transmission jack that you can buy. Now you might be looking at this thinking, oh, I'd like to get me one of those. And well, all I can say is you do you. I can't control your life. If you want to buy this thing, go ahead and do it. Um, but I will tell you that you probably won't enjoy using it. And I haven't enjoyed using it. Although, like I said, it successfully installed some transmissions and it was the cheapest one I could buy. It has just been crappy to use. So our task today is, well, to see if we can make it better. And now you might be thinking, hey, why are you going to take this piece of junk that you just rat ragged on and try to make it better? And well, the simple thing is, you know, when I look to step up to the next one, and I do have some jobs coming up where I'd like to use this, they're about $650 to move up to the next quality step up. And then transmission jacks can easily go into the $1,200 to $2,000 range for a proper, really nice unit. So can I take my $180 unit and make it a little more enjoyable or easy to use or safer to use uh, around the shop here? That is gonna be our goal today. So when I'm complaining about this, what are my complaints? And well, honestly, you look at it and you say, well, hey, the thing looks pretty sturdy. It's actually got some pretty beefy metal. It's got some pretty wide uh, you know, supports down here. It's a full height unit. It raises up fairly high. Um, what's the complain? Well, the two things I would complain about are, well, one of them's my problem, is that we have the low height lift. We don't have a ceiling in the shop high enough. I had to go for the, the base plate model lift. So that means I have the plate on the ground where the cables run. Now that's not such a bad thing until you're using a transmission jack because when you lift a vehicle up on the lift that I have, transmissions are usually right where that base plate is. So we're trying to roll this thing over that base plate and line it up on that base plate and drop a transmission successfully without having it tip over. That's one of the ways that this can get kind of harrowing. And that's not really the fault of this transmission jack. Any transmission jack, I would experience that problem. Now granted, a really nice expensive one would probably have higher quality casters on it. Most of them have about the same size casters. Now, if we can move up to a two inch higher caster, that's gonna do two things for us. That will make our overall height just a little bit higher on the unit. The larger casters will hopefully roll over that base plate easier and safer. So the first thing we're gonna to do today to try to make this thing a little better is we're gonna go from, I think these are three inch casters. I bought a set of five inch casters that I'm hoping are gonna bolt in. Now the next things are more what you would experience if you were to go out and buy one of these. Like I said, you do you, I can't control your life. Well, basically what this thing is, if you look at it, it is the base of square tube with some gussets and a plate where they mount a long reach ram. And that ram, as you can see here, is just a hand operated unit with a turn valve on it. So if I turn the valve and then I push on it, there we go, our jack will go down. And that's kind of one of the issues is, is twofold here. So first off, when I'm trying to manipulate this thing and get the height just right, you're down here twisting this thing and then, okay, I got to go back up. You got to get this thing off and you got to put it in here and then you got to jack it up. And every move of this, you get like tiny little bit of movement. So when you're going up, first of all, you got to do this thing about 700 times. And when you're trying to do the last bit of fitment and get it perfect, if you're one person, you're down here holding it, looking, doing this up. Oh, I went too far. Now I gotta uh, get this thing on here and, and then I gotta twist this, but I twist it too far and the thing drops two inches and it's just a pain. So the hydraulics are, are a problem. Just the fact that this is hand operated. A lot of new, nicer ones are foot operated. You're down here, you're working, you got two hands on what you're doing and you're using a foot pedal to raise it up. I got this unit here, which is all wrapped in plastic and we'll get you some close ups of everything. But this is an air hydraulic pump, an air operated hydraulic pump. So we're gonna have an air inlet and then we have a hydraulic output. 
And uh, what we should be able to do here is, uh, well, we'll find a way and maybe we'll just get a little bit of metal and we'll mount this up here. Okay, and then when I'm working the transmission, we should be able to push down, go ahead and pump it up. So this is just a cheap kind of knockoff of some of the uh, other ones that are on the market. This is made by Vivor and uh, I'll post links to everything. Now this unit itself is over $100 and well, uh, we told you we paid $170 for our jack originally. So it is quite an investment for this jack. So basically the premise today is to see if I can take about $150 worth of materials and transform and double the price of my jack but also make it much better to use. And even as good, hopefully, or close to as good as say a $700 jack or even a $1,000 jack. So let's go ahead and do that today. I think the first thing we'll do is the easy thing. We'll swap out the casters. All right, so here's one. Let's see if our new ones will fit. I think they're narrower casters too which uh, we'll see if that works. Okay, so they're quite a bit bigger. That's nice. They are all plastic, whereas these are some really cheap cast something. Um, but I'm confident in the weight ratings on these. And let's see, these should be standard bases, but they're not, and that's what I was afraid of. So when you order casters, there's only like a couple different base types, but what I was afraid of is exactly what we're seeing, which is the base on this one. I measured it was quite a bit lower, so I might have to drill this one out a little bit. Let me go do one and I'll see if it works. All right, so we should be in good shape now. Now let's see if, uh, if these fit. So what I'm going to do is, since I've got access here, this is a fun operation by yourself. So you got to hold about 17 different things, but it's not so bad. Let's get them started. Keep everything loose and that way we can work on getting everything lined up. All right, there's one of four casters done. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest. They're all done the same way and I'll bring you back and we'll take a look at what it looks like when they're all done. All right, so we've upgraded to five inch casters. Let's go ahead and tilt this thing up and see how it rolls. Oh, it actually rolls much, much easier. And uh, the nice thing is we have brakes now. So I can lock this thing in the place and uh, I wouldn't exactly call it non-tip proof, but uh, I mean, it would tip just as easily on those, so it's no worse than it was. So I kind of like having the locks. Yeah, don't try this at home. Man, feels pretty stable with me on it. I probably, I'm probably at least a 4L60E, maybe two, who am I kidding? But uh, yeah, this thing rolls nice now. Oh yeah, look at that, spin it around. You can spin your transmission. All right, so I'm happy with that. So our next thing to do is, well, this is the side that we would be operating the jack on. So we probably wanna put our foot pedal on this side. Before mounting the foot pedal, I had to figure out how to plumb it. Now, originally, I was under the impression I'd be able to make this kind of like a dual action foot pedal, you know, one direction to raise it and the other direction to lower the jack. But I quickly find out that's either not possible or I'm just not smart enough to figure out how to make it work on this type of jack ram. Either way, I decided to try something odd. I actually decided to try reading the instructions. I'm pretty sure this is where you would put it. I guess it's possible. I might be way wrong here. You might put it in this port here. Maybe I should read the instructions. That would make a little more sense. Though I wouldn't understand how you'd be able to take care of the valve here. I mean, that's certainly 3 8 NPT. Hey, look, instructions. All right, let's see what it says here. Probably nothing. Maintenance, pff, before use, pff, operation, pff, 
Connect the hose of the air hydraulic pump to the hydraulic coupling on the selected tool. That's literally all it says. So, all right. Freshly emboldened and reminded that reading instructions never has any value, I quickly tossed them in the garbage and went along figuring it out on my own. What we're going to do is take this one off. And to get this one off, there's a little cutter pin back here. So we'll take that off and then we'll unscrew this unit here. So this is a pipe fitting of some kind. And it is definitely not 3 8 NPT. Crap. So let me go back to my adapters, see what I got. Whoops. I visited my great box of adapters and fittings, hoping I'd be able to adapt the hose to the unit of this hydraulic ram. Unfortunately, I got stuck here. So here's another adapter. This is a 3 fourths NPT to a 1 half, and that certainly, this will certainly screw into that. Okay, so that screws in nice, and let's see if this screws in. And that screws in pretty nice. I don't know, it's not... The more I look at it, the more I'm not entirely positive this is NPT threads on this because yeah that thread it's hard to see on the camera probably they look like they're just ever so fine in comparison so I think I'm out of luck all right I thought I was in luck because um, I thought oh I, I did like two turns and in this thing but look at how loose it is so I mean yeah I could probably force it but I don't want to I don't want to ruin those threads. If I can't get this to thread like that in the here, I'm not going to want to force it. And I'm going to need to go to my local hydraulics place probably and have them match up the threads for me and get me an adapter. Um, like I said, this, this does, does not want to go in. Since we couldn't find the right adapter and would need a trip to town, I went ahead and moved on to mounting the air hydraulic pump. To mount the air hydraulic pump, I needed to make a mounting plate that would retain it to a leg of the transmission jack, but also be easy to remove if needed. I found some angle stock that was long enough, and after some careful measuring, was able to cut out four pieces to make a nice rectangular base. Once I had the pieces cut, I test fit, confirming the pump would fit. All right, it's going to fit. I'm not really aiming for perfect. I'm aiming for fitting. We'll, uh, we'll square it up with the welder. How about that? <laughs> all right, that's, uh, that's not square at all. But that's good enough. Since the pump fit, it was time to weld it together. All right, let's figure out where we want to put this. Finding the right leg to mount it to, I went ahead and ground off a bit of the paint and attached the mounting plate we made with a few welds. All right, and if we did this right, this thingy. Here. <laughs> I guess I can pull my ears out here. So, I don't have my external microphone, but that's all right. Hopefully, I'm recording. 
But uh, so basically, here's where we are. We've got our uh, plate mounted for our device, for our uh, hydraulic air pump. Um, I'm thinking we just set it on there. I'm going to use some big hefty zip ties to tie it on there. And then we can always cut those and replace them if we ever need to service the unit. Um, I suppose if we wanted to, you could put little outriggers and, and screws or bolts and stuff and kind of make a hold down. You could use a bungee cord, all kinds of ways you could attach it. You could probably just leave it sitting as is because these are big enough that they're not going to go anywhere. So also my welds are as good as they need to be for quick welds. They're things that we can grind off pretty easily without damaging our structure down here. So if we ever want to remove this, we certainly can. But I think I'm going to be pretty happy with it there. Um, like I said, the only other solution would be to move it in between these arms and we'd have to build more of a structure and waste more scrap steel and, uh, well, we can use those for other projects. So, All right, so we're back after doing some adapter shopping. We went to our local cauliflower, and which if you don't know cauliflower, it's not the nasty vegetable that people try to make steaks out of. It is uh, a hydraulics fitting and hose shop that can pretty much make and hook you up with anything you need hydraulics wise. I know the one that's not too far from me, the guy that works there is awesome. He always figures out what I need. So I just took him basically this part here and said, hey, I need to adapt that to a 3 8 NPT. And he was able to find what I needed. So it turns out he checked the threads on my bottle jack here are actually an M20 by 1.5 thread pitch. So he was able to find an adapter. He said, Parker only makes an adapter for that that goes to quarter NPT. So then he got me a quarter NPT to 3 8 NPT adapter to stack on that. And then I went ahead and put this quick connect fitting that came with the, uh, with the pump. And uh, well, that went on just fine. We then went ahead and routed the hose into our pump and I added a quarter inch NPT uh, air fitting. I got our air hose right here and we're gonna go ahead and give this a shot. Now, I'm going to hook this up, and before we use it, I'm going to tell you the main limitation that I have found, and I'll even ask you, because I know, well, a lot of you are probably a lot smarter than I am, maybe you can tell me how to make this work. What I'm going to demonstrate here is the jack going up, but I'm still going to need to use the release knob on the bottom of the jack here, this port, to release it. Now, this does have a release in the pedal, and it seems to release the pressure in the line, um, but it doesn't drop the cylinder. Now, of course, this is a single action cylinder, but it has that here. So I don't know if I had gone into this port instead of the main jacking port, would that have solved the problem and allowed this to kind of do up and down with the foot pedal? Right now I can just go up. Um, what I don't know and why I don't think that would work is certainly if I release this and pump, it won't do anything because this has not just a uh, threaded portion, but if you were to take out this plug, it has about an inch long metal piece on the end of it that pushes against most likely a spring loaded check ball, which is normally what you find in these. So I'll go ahead and show you what it does. But if, if you're smarter than I am and you think that there's a way I can adapt this and with the foot pedal do both or even have a second foot pedal for the release, I think I could do that. Uh, that would be kind of cool to see too. I haven't found any remote releases for these because it seems since they have that long piece that interfaces with that spring-loaded check ball, there's really nothing you can get for it. But the big thing is in the past, I used to have to hand pump this thing about eight bazillion times to get it to go up. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and use the foot pedal. Still not the fastest thing in the world, but that's okay. Because in all reality, when you're jacking up a uh, transmission, you need to be able to fine tune it. So you want to, you know, be able to rotate these and get it angled up. But then, oh, I just need to go a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch, a full inch. You know, you, you do kind of get that with this. It, it doesn't jack it up so fast that it's not usable. Now I won't go all the way up just because well, I don't want my compressor to turn on and just looking in our viewfinder, this thing's gonna go off the screen anyway, but it'll certainly pump it up all the way. And I have kind of leaned on the thing and stood on it and it'll lift me up. So I'm pretty sure that it's pumping with good force. You know, I have about 90 PSI regulated from my compressor and that's just riding through my standard air hose into a chuck in that quarter inch NPT in there. 
So what I do need to do, like I said, to release it, I still need to come in here and put my jack handle on and rotate the release screw to get this to come down. But it seems to operate nice and smooth. I actually think that I might have released some air bubbles in this pump, which I'm surprised I hadn't checked before and maybe they just developed over time. But my drop of the cylinder seems smoother than it used to be. And part of that is too, I've pretty much exchanged most of the fluid in here. So maybe just going to new fluid also has helped this out. But uh, everything seems pretty good. But like I said, I still have to run the release here. Say I'm you know, trying to get the transmission just right. You're kind of one hand in it looking. You know, you can release and drop it. Oops, dropped it too far. Instead of having to take this off, relocate it, get it into that pump and hand pump it. Now I just basically put my foot up here and go back up. But in the meantime, just being able to lift something up with a step of a foot instead of cranking this thing eight bazillion times is going to be nice. And then all I have to worry about is, you know, when it comes to lowering something, and that's a little easier anyway, because you can manipulate this with your hand, reach down and watch it. So let me go ahead and lower this. Pretty sure we got all the air out of it. And uh, well, we should be good for today. So for the time being, that is it for our video. If you like this, do us a favor, like the video, drop a comment, subscribe to Vortex Garage, all that good stuff. And also, like I said, if you've got some experience with these things, if you kind of know how I could maybe convert this setup to be a kind of dual action with the foot pedal here, that would be pretty awesome. So anyway, if you've got one of these, hopefully you found this helpful as a neat way you can kind of modify it. And while we'll be putting this thing to work in a little bit, taking out and reinstalling a transmission, so we'll certainly get to see how nice it is to use the foot pedal instead of cranking this thing six billion times. Or was it eight gazillion? I lost track. At any rate, we'll catch you later with more here on Vortex Garage.